It's us versus them. The game has changed. It all starts today. You are the new prototypes. We are Under Armour. The future is ours! Under Armour was founded in 1995 by Kevin Plank. Having played football himself at the University of Maryland, Plank experienced firsthand the frustration of sweat-soaked t-shirts. Inspired by this, he created Under Armour as a brand focused on athletic performance with specialized materials like moisture wicking fabric. Headquartered in Baltimore, Under Armour grew steadily in its first few years of operation and gained reputation through small but notable deals with Georgia Tech and North Carolina State. The company's breakthrough moment came in 1999 in the form of Oliver Stone's Any Given Sunday. This brilliant use of product placement, coupled with a strategically timed advertisement in ESPN the magazine, produced $750,000 in sales. Thus, nine years after its founding, Under Armour had made a name for itself and proved it wasn't going anywhere. Entering the 21st century, Under Armour was poised to truly challenge the established powers in sports apparel like Nike and Adidas. The company secured deals to outfit the XFL, NHL, and MLB, and its products were available in more than 2,500 retail outlets. While popularity and sales were quickly rising, under Armour had to withstand heavy competition as its competitors tried to imitate many of the unique performance materials that set the company apart. Starting with external analysis, Under Armour operates in the athletic apparel industry. This highly competitive industry can be considered an oligopoly as a few firms like Nike, Adidas, Reebok, and Under Armour dominate the market. This is a multi-billion dollar industry, not only in the United States, but with a strong global presence. These four main players make up an interesting and not terribly attractive sportswear industry. Porter's five forces model can be applied to gain a better picture of this environment. The first force, the threat of rivalry, involves the extent of the competition among the contending firms. The athletic apparel industry is quite concentrated with Nike, Adidas, Reebok, and Under Armour, and a few other companies dominating sales. Competition is fierce and spans across segments such as footwear, apparel, and sports equipment. The market is also becoming very saturated and there is little differentiation existing between products, increasing rivalry even more. With this in mind, the threat of rivalry in the sports apparel industry can be considered high. The second force in Porter's model is the threat of entry. In the athletic apparel industry, there are significant barriers which prevent entry. These include the economies of scale, marketing ability, and access to suppliers and distribution channels required to gain a foothold and compete with the established firms in the market. However, Under Armour's own very recent surge to prom prominence illustrates the possibility for new entrants. Due to this, the threat of entry for the industry can be regarded as moderate if you have the necessary resources and drive. The third force in Porter's model is the bargaining power of suppliers. The level of this threat is determined by the power and leverage suppliers hold and thus their ability to raise prices or squeeze industry profitability. In the athletic apparel industry, the majority of manufacturing is outsourced to cheap suppliers who compete for these lucrative contracts. This fact, combined with the lack of differentiation in products and a low threat for forward integration, means that there is an overall low level of bargaining power of suppliers in the industry. The fourth, fourth force in Porter's model is the bargaining power of buyers which involves the ability of customers to negotiate prices or even relationship terms. In the athletic apparel industry, buyers can be considered retailers, consumers, and also the teams and leagues that negotiate sponsorships deals. Due to the concentration of retailers and significant purchases they make, their bargaining power as buyers can be considered moderate to high. The bargaining power of consumers as buyers can be viewed as the same because of their low switching costs and ability to shop around between brands. Finally, professional sports teams and leagues possess a high level of bargaining power due to their high profile and how extremely lucrative these sponsorship deals are. Consequently, the bargaining power of buyers in the industry is extremely high. 
The last force in Porter's model is the threat of substitutes. This threat can be determined by identifying products that can erode the industry's profitability by stealing business. For the athletic apparel industry, substitutes include cheaper, generic apparel as well as other types of apparel that might replace the buyer's needs. The saturation of the market with other generic and competing substitutes means that the threat of substitutes for this industry is moderate. To review, Porter's five forces say that the threat of rivalry is high, the threat of entry is moderate, the bargaining power of suppliers is low, the bargaining power of buyers is high, and the threat of substitutes is moderate. This external analysis reflects a mature industry that still has relatively high growth as more consumers are becoming health conscious and focused on athletic wear. However, the intense level of competition between firms indicates declining profitability besides the high end of athletic apparel. Moving on to internal analysis, within the sportswear industry, Under Armour has created a solid position for itself. There are five main factors that make Under Armour strong. These include brand name, special fabrics, key sponsorships, economies of scale, and endorsed stars. While all of these are valuable, only the brand name is specifically unique and rare to Under Armour. In terms of Under Armour's income statement, the company has been able to grow its bottom line over the past four years, reaching a whopping $96.9 million at the end of 2011. This is mainly due to a huge push in revenue, which was even able to compensate for increases in cost of goods sold, selling, general, and administrative expenses, and even income taxes. This speaks to the fact that Under Armour snuck up on its competition and created a strong name for itself. Under Armour claims about 2.6% market share compared to a 5.5% share by Adidas and 7% share by Nike. However, it should be noted that Under Armour is slowly taking market share, while Adidas and Nike have stayed relatively flat. Under Armour has experienced a tripling effect in stock price to its current value of $82.32. As a staggering result, Plank, who once didn't even have himself on payroll, is now worth more than $900 million. Overall, Under Armour is expecting an increase in return on assets and has relatively stable turnover. In terms of shareholder value, Under Armour is expecting an increase in its return on equity. However, because the return on assets is still significantly less than the cost of capital, Under Armour shareholders are not seeing an increase in value that they would like. Under Armour's revenue can be mainly attributed to apparel followed by footwear, accessories, and then licensing profits. Of this revenue, much more rolls in from North America than the rest of the globe. Under Armour shows no signs of backing down with its introduction of even more new and innovative products, including Under Armour charged cotton, cold gear, and hot gear. Finally, a SWOT analysis shows us that Under Armour's main strengths are a five-year glove and footwear contract with the NFL, along with the title of exclusive sponsorship of the Combine. Under Armour has also become the official footwear sponsor of Major League Baseball, continuing the company focus on licensing. Under Armour does have two main weaknesses, which include a small amount of specialty stores and complaints of discomfort from the Under Armour footwear users. The most noticeable possibility for threat lies in these poor reviews of Under Armour footwear and is something that the company should closely monitor. Finally, Under Armour should focus on the immense opportunity that lies in a strong global presence. The international market is full of opportunity for any company if the right strategy can be successfully implemented.